you, Lord. We glorify your name. Oh, wasta hili bwana. Wasta hili. Wasta hili bwana. Oh, we bless you tonight, Lord. We glorify your name. This day, Lord, we bless your name, oh God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you are doing, oh God. We thank you for what you are going to do in days to come, oh God. Our faith is lifted up to you tonight. As we lift your name, as we glorify you, as we exalt you, as we sing of your greatness and of your power and of your majesty, oh God. As this service continues, oh God, minister to us, oh God. Minister to your people, my God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for forgiving us, oh God. Thank you because you are at work, oh God. You are changing us, oh God. You are changing us, oh God. You are changing us, oh God. You are working in us, oh God. You are molding us, oh God. Oh, we bless you tonight. We bless you tonight, Lord. We magnify, we glorify, we exalt you, Lord. We are doing great things. You are at work, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We glorify. Oh, yes. Tonight, Lord. Tonight, Lord. Tonight, be glorified. Tonight, be exalted, oh God. Tonight, be lifted up, oh God. The highest place, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We bless you tonight, Lord. Oh, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for health. We thank you for forgiving us, Lord. We thank you for saving us. We thank you, Lord, for healing our physical bodies, oh God. We thank you for your protection and provision, oh God. We thank you for the things that you have done, the things you're doing at the moment, the things that you will do tomorrow and in the days to come, oh God. Our faith is lifted up to you, Lord. We lift our faith to you, Lord, because we know that you're at work, that you're working, oh God, that you're working you are rearranging things, oh God. You are shaping us, oh God. You are putting things and you are establishing others, oh God. You are shaking the foundations, oh God. And you are laying new foundations, oh God. And tonight, Lord, we glorify your name. We exalt you, Father. We thank you for the things that, Lord, that you are doing. The things that are happening at the moment, even as we continue in this service, oh God. And this service, oh God, wherever these airwaves are reaching, oh God. This night, Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much, oh God. Thank you for those who are following us, oh God. From their hospital beds, beds oh God. Those who are in hotels, those who are in prisons. Oh God, those my God, as we stream this service, oh God, those who are watching us, oh God, through their gadgets, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Facebook Live, YouTube, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever this worship. Wherever this prayer is reaching, oh God, move, oh God, move and minister to your people. Reach out, oh God, to the hopeless, oh God, reach out to the sick, reach out to those who have not known you. As their Lord and Savior, reach out, oh God. Bring up change, oh God. Change situation. Hear the cry of your people. Hear the pain of your people. Lord, you have been in this earth, oh God. You have been here. You have been human, oh God. You were touched by infirmities of your people. You walked where we walk today. You felt what we feel today. You understand every struggle. You understand every pain, every anguish, oh God. Every sorrow, oh God. Oh God, you understand it, oh God. And we want to thank you for what you're doing in this nation. Thank you for what you're doing in Langata, in Nairobi. Thank you for what you're doing, my God, in Kenya. Thank you for what you're doing in East Africa. Thank you because of what you're doing in Africa. Thank you because of what you're doing in the world, oh God. We join up with you, oh God. We participate, oh God, in changing the world, in making this place better, oh God, through the proclamation of the gospel of salvation, the gospel of peace, the gospel of reconciliation, the gospel of forgiveness, the gospel of redemption, 
redemption, the gospel, my God, of bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And this morning, oh Father, we thank you as we prepare to receive your words, oh God. We want to pray the Lord, you minister to your people, even as your servant comes to bring the word this, this evening, oh God. Minister to him, oh God. Thank you for those who are here. Thank you because even for those who are watching us online, oh God. Father, bless them and minister to them this morning because we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus name amen and amen and amen amen thank you worship team you may take your seat thank you for those who are following us online we want to welcome you this evening to our midweek service and it is my joy right now to receive our bishop uh, Dr. Jeffrey Juguna as he comes to take the service from there thank you hallelujah to the Lamb of God would appreciate all of you who are following this service online and we thank God because of the opportunity we have to transmit the message online and this is open to go anywhere as many as would want to connect because of the online facilities around the world. We continue to appeal to people internationally to continue to remember our nation Kenya. We're going through very a challenging time with the storms, uh, with the floods, uh, and the mudslides, and uh, f uh, you know, so many things have happened. We've lost lives, so we appeal for prayers that God Himself, in His wisdom, would grant that these rains will subside uh, so that we don't suffer losses of life. Uh, we thank God for all of you, and we want to pray that you stay with us and follow through this sermon. I believe that God is about to teach us great truths. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity we have to hear your word, and I pray that your word will go forth with power, even as we are pleading your mercy upon this nation, not only Kenya, but the East African region, oh God. With the, store, with the kind of friends that are taking praise, that, Lord, you will preserve lives. Be with us, O Lord, as we hear your word today, in Jesus' name. And Pastor Man of Priest. Amen. We thank God for yet another opportunity to meet again. And uh, today we continue with the lesson that we started last week on the study of the church. And uh, just to give us a lick up, we looked at several things uh, last week, and uh, we looked at what the church is, and we were able to discover that the church is, uh, is uh, from the word ecclesia, the called out one, and we have been called out of the world to represent the kingdom of God, and we looked at uh, several illustrations of the church as it is in the Bible, and we realized that the church is referred to uh, in several ways, the church is referred to as a body. That was number one. And we looked at the scriptures in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And the church is also referred to again as a bride. And we looked at Revelation chapter number 19. And we also saw another illustration of the church or another metaphor that the church is also referred to as a temple. And we looked at Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 19. And we also saw another metaphor referring to the church that the church is a royal priesthood. And we looked at 1 Peter 2, 8, 9. And lastly, we looked at the, uh, the illustration of the church as a flock. And we looked at uh, the book of Acts, chapter number 20, verse number 28. Today, we'll continue uh, to look at when did the church start and what is the functions of the church. And our leading passage, as we looked last week, was the book of Matthew, chapter number 16, and verse number 18. Matthew chapter number six, uh, 16 and verse number 18. And the Bible reads, uh, reading from N, uh, New King James Version, the Bible reads in the book of Matthew chapter number 16 and verse 18, And I say also to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. This is Jesus speaking to Peter after, G after Peter was able to, through the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, reveal or was revealed, the Holy Spirit revealed to him who Jesus was, that Jesus was Christ the Messiah. And Jesus made the statement that I will build my church and the gates of hate shall not prevail. Therefore, we continue today and we look at when did the church start. 
when did the church start? It is important to understand uh, that uh, in the Old Testament context, we didn't have the church as it is today. And uh, we, when you look at the Bible, we realize from several passages of Scripture that the church did not start as it is until Jesus had ascended to heaven. And uh, when you even look at when Jesus was talking, even this particular passage of Scripture in the book of, uh, first, uh, uh, the book of Matthew chapter number 16, you realize that when Jesus is speaking here, he's talking about the future because he says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of his will not prevail. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, Jesus at that particular time is speaking of something that will happen in the future. And we are saying that the church did not begin as we know the church today until Jesus had resurrected and ascended to heaven and the Holy Spirit came. That is when the church began. In other words, the church began on the day of Pentecost. That is 50 days after the Passover when Jesus died and rose. So the book of Acts, of course, details uh, the beginning of the church and its miraculous spread. If you read the book of uh, uh, Acts, you're able to see this, that it is when the Holy Spirit came upon uh, the apostles, the, the, ten, uh, the, the 120 who were gathered in the upper room, that is when the church began. So the Holy Spirit was poured upon the 120, that is uh, as they prayed, and the same disciples, of course, we realize that the same disciples who were very fearful before, when the Holy Spirit was poured on them, they had the boldness and the courage to be able to preach the gospel. And we see the first crusade or the first open air meeting that Peter preached in Acts chapter number 2. And 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. So that is the beginning of the church. That is the birthday of the New Testament church as we know it today. It is the church began 50 days uh, after the Passover, that is, after Jesus died and rose again. That is 50, 40 days after his, 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 his resurrection and then 10 days after he ascended, a total of 50 days. So we see this, that uh, when these uh, disciples, of course, were filled with the Spirit, they preached the gospel, people got saved, and the church spread. Let alone we see the, the persecution coming. And through the persecution, these believers were able to spread out all over in different places. And wherever they went, they took the gospel with them. And the church continued from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to at the uttermost part of the world and where we are today. And the church is moving on and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba kanisa kuanza kwa kanisa kama vile tunavyojua kanisa leo ni kwamba kanisa kuanza kwake ni wakati ambapo Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu alishuka juu ya wale wat, uh, wale wafuasi wa Kristo 120 baada ya Yesu ku Pa binguni, siku kumi baada isu kupaa binguni, na hapo diyo kanisa ikanza Yerusalemu, na kutoka Yerusalemu, kanisa ikaweza kupanuka, na kuenda Samaria, kuenda sehemu zingine, Judea, na kuenda sehemu zingine, mpaka kufika katika kila sehemu ya ulimwengu. So we continue today and look at the purpose or the function of the church. What is the purpose of the church? Ka kazi ya kanisa ni gani? What is the function or the purpose of the church? There are three purposes as to why the church exists. Three purposes or three reasons as to why the church exists. Number one as to why we exist as a church is to worship God. So the church exists to worship God. So the worship of God is the highest calling of man. And God created us for this purpose. And failure to do so, we live a, a, a hole in our lives. And this is what Jesus said in the book of John chapter number 4, just supporting our argument. He says this, John chapter number 4, verse 23. And verse 24, if we can have it there on the screen, we can read together John, uh, the book of uh, John chapter number 4, verse number 23 and to 24. Jesus when he encountered the Samaritan woman, he said this to this uh, Samaritan woman. But a time is coming. A time is coming. And now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. 
For the Father seeks such people to be his worshippers. God is spirit, and the people who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So this is what we are saying, that our focus must be God. Our focus must be God. When we gather to worship, when we gather, anytime as we gather here, we are gathering here to worship God. Our purpose, our primary reason we meet every time we meet together is to worship, is to minister to God. Tunakusanyika pamoja katika mahekalu, katika jina la Kristo, ili tuweze kuwabudu. Kwa hivyo sababu ya kwanza ya kanisa ni kuwabudu mungu. It is for the purpose of worshiping God. Anything we do, chochote tunako kifanya, iwe kwamba ni kumutumikia mungu, ni kumpa mungu ibada. We exist and we live to worship God. A singer sang and said, the reason as to why I live is to worship him. The reason as to why we live is to worship him. So the first purpose of the, of the church is to minister to the Lord. To minister to the Lord. So Christians must be careful and we must take the warnings that are given in the Bible very, very seriously. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 25. I want us to read together. Hebrews 10, 25. Waibrania sura ya kumi aya ya We can have it on the screen. We can read together. Hebrews 10, 25. This is what it says. That do not forsake the gathering of the saints as it is manner of some. In other words, we should not give up the habit of meeting for worship. There it is. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, Christians must meet in fellowships. We must, we must meet in churches for fellowship, for Bible study, for whatever. But all what we are doing is that we are coming together to minister to God and to worship God. Even today, we are here to worship him. We have come here in this fellowship to worship him. Even those of you who are following this, uh, this service online is about worship. So the first purpose of the church is to worship God. There's something important that I want us to note. That the church or the early church shifted the day of worship from Saturday, that is the Sabbath, to the Sunday, the first day of the week. Acts 20 verse 7. Acts 20 verse 7. If you can have it, we can read together. Matendo ya mitume shirini mstali wa saba. Acts 20 verse 7, there it is. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. The church started meeting on the first day of the week. This is a classical example. On the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, siku ya kwanza ya juma, ni siku ya jumapili, the church moved the previous, previously, the day of worship used to be Sabbath. That was on a Saturday. But because Jesus resurrected on the first day of the week, now the church moved the, 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 the day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday, the first day of the week. So we meet on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, the day that Jesus resurrected from the dead. So we meet the first day of the week to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we meet to, come, to, uh, to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus, which occurred on the first day of the week. And we can see passages of the scripture in the gospel to confirm this. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse 1, which is also Mark 16, 2, Luke 24, 1, and John 21. But we just read Matthew chapter number 28 and verse 1 to confirm this. This is what it says. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. So, and behold, there was great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. If any, we can continue the next verse. We continue the next verse, number three. 
His countenance was like lightning. His clothing was white as snow. But this account is talking about the fact that when they went to the tomb on the first day of the week, they found that Jesus had resurrected from the dead. So what we are saying is that the first day of the week, which is Sunday, it is our day of worship. And the reason is why we worship on the first day of the week. It is because it is the day that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Therefore, we come to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus. That's why we worship on Sunday. Or that's why we meet for services on Sunday instead of Sabbath. So number one purpose of the church, worship. Number two purpose of the church is edification. Kujengana. Edification. Kujengana moja na mwingine. So, the church, as a body of Christ, is to edify itself in the community of faith. Acts 2.42. We can read. Matendo ya mitume 2.42. Sura ya pili, arabai na mbili. We can read together about this purpose of the church. That is the purpose of edification. Kujengana moje kwa mwingine. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers, wakaendelea kila siku katika mafundisho ya mitume na katika ushirika na kumega mkate na kwa maombi katika ushirika. So this is the way it was and this is the way it's supposed to be. That the disciples met together for fellowship. They met together for, to, 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 to lead the Bible, to lead the word of God, and to break the bread together and to pray so that they can edify one another. So the second purpose of the church is edification. Edification. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 11 to 13. We can also read that. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 11 to 13. What does it say? And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. We continue. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is what we are seeing here. That the purpose is why God has given the five uh, uh, governments or gifts in the body is for the purpose of equipping the saints so that we can be edified one with, uh, we can edify one another. So the Bible says, until we attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, a mature person attaining to the measure of Christ in his full stature, building one another up. So, second purpose of the church is to edify, building one another up. So, Christians are commanded to teach and encourage one another by preaching the word, singing, praying, and correcting one another too. Ephesians 5.18 says this, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispersion, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking, verse number 19 says this, the, verse number 19, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Look at this. It is about one another. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. When we come together, we come to encourage one another. We come to build one another. We come to encourage and lift one another. So this is the second purpose of the church, to edify one another. Brothers and sisters, Galatians 6, 1-2. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the role of Christ. This is Galatians chapter number 6, verse 1 and 2. We carry one another's burden. We carry one another's burden. In other words, you are, you are, you are brother's keeper. Your brother's keeper. We help and support one another. Number C, the third purpose of the church. The third purpose of the church or the third function of the church is evangelism. Evangelism. Kazi ya tatu ya kanisa ni uinjilisti. Evangelism. So the church is to evangelize to the world. Preaching the gospel. And of course this word gospel, of course, comes from the Greek word 
evangelion, which means good news. Sharing the gospel with others means sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and his offer for, of salvation. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Acts 1, 8. Matendo ya mitume sura ya kwanza, mstali wa nani. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the farthest parts of the earth. So the third purpose of the church, the third function of the church is evangelism. God has, God has, 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 has called the church to evangelize to the world. That's why you have been given the great commission. Go everywhere and make disciples of all nations. The Bible says you are the salt and the light of the world. So the purpose the that purpose of the church is evangelism. Go ye therefore and make disciples. The reason as to why Holy Spirit came is to empower us so that we can be able to share the gospel of Christ with the power and anointing in Jesus' name. So in other words, we are saying evangelism and missions. The only way it can be effectively done is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why, as we have been saying, that it is imperative that as a believer you be baptized in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the anointing that will be able to catapult you and to compel you to share Christ in an effective way. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will be fearful, we shall be fearful. It is until the disciples receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is when they had the boldness and the courage to be able to take the gospel. And the Bible says that God confirmed his word with signs and wonders because it is the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of the mission. And therefore, all of us who are born again, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can be an effective evangelist. You can be able to take the word of God wherever you go. And the kingdom of God will come through us because this is the mandate. Jesus told the disciples, pray that the kingdom of God may come. How does the kingdom of come, God come? By sharing the gospel. So we are saying, Three purposes of the church or three functions of the church. Number one, the church exists to worship God. That is upward. Worship God. The church, number two, exists to edify, for edification, to edify one another. And number three, the church exists to evangelize, to reach out to others. Three things, worship, edification, and evangelism. And that is a complete church. And that is who we are. And that is exactly what we do every day of our lives until Christ comes back. May the Lord bless you. Please follow uh, this message to help you. May we be practical in our Christianity every day of our lives as we spread the gospel because Jesus has assured us how I will build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Thank you and God bless you. We will be uh, giving you the number for you to send the offering. We'll be rolling it there, the till number and the, the pay bill. Send your offerings and God bless you. In Jesus' name, let's have the benediction from our bishop. Amen. I believe the number will be transmitted. I hope you are able to see it. Uh, uh, the number, the PBU number, the PBU number will come to you, uh, which is uh, triple two, triple one, and the account number is one eight two six nine six. That is not difficult for us to catch. Triple two, triple one, the account number is one eight two six nine six. What a message about the purpose of the church. The purpose. Because the reason we live is to worship. The reason we live is also to bear the witness of the cross, 
And that emphasis about worship is so important. And you see, when we worship God, we don't only just worship with our mouth, but we worship him with everything, everything that we have. We worship him with our resources, with our lives, with our time, so that it, he is the one that takes preeminence, always taking the preeminence. So today, as we wrap up this service, I challenge you from wherever you are, whatever church you attend, to understand that the main, main objective that we live is to be able to worship him and to worship him in sincerity, to worship him in purity for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the giving of your people, whatever they give from. Thank you for those who are following this sermon, that they follow this sermon from uh, the nation of Kenya or from around the world. We pray that this word will go forth and challenge people to understand the very, very important purposes and objectives of, the, of your body, the church. Be glorified. We worship you and honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's do a little bit of the chorus of I worship you, and then we're going to be sharing the benediction. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship. to your holiness when I look into your holiness when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you when I found when I found the joy of looking at when my will become enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship. I worship you. Thank you because you're the one that preserves us and give us the strength to worship you 
Lord, we live also that we may edify one another. Help us to be obedient by encouraging, exhorting, affirming, and doing everything we can in the second objective of the purpose we live. Lord, help us to become faithful witnesses. As you who told your disciples, I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Lord, I thank you for those who have given through the virtual platform because that's the only way they would give in that we don't, we are not in the physical building. We thank you for those who believe and support this vision. We honor you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's continue to lift the nation before God. Let's continue to believe that God will cause this rain uh, to go down so that we don't have in more calamities and chaotic situations. We know that God cares. God bless you. Have a great day.